Hi, Dr. Garima here. <laughs> Recording video after two weeks almost, I guess. Daily it was used to be in my mind that I want to record a video, but not possible. Like I said, living with a toddler is <laughs> difficult in itself. <laughs> Especially when you start to have some maid problems, but thankfully that's sorted out for the moment until January. Then my maid is going to go on leave and I don't know what I'm going to go do at that point of time. <laughs> so difficult to find a good helper who would you know take care of your child when you're away at work with respect to other things so anyways uh, that being said uh, how are you guys doing i hope everything's well and uh, all those candidates who want to appear for the march exam i hope you guys have started preparing i know it's a little early for you all but then the kind of knowledge that you possess i mean what i mean what i mean to say is the kind of knowledge that you have learned in dentistry so far and the australian dental exam has a lot of practical applications to it so it is taking time for you guys to absorb and adsorb that knowledge Uh, and implement it while solving the questions i mean it's it's not like you don't know the answer but then you are failing to understand the keywords and those people who do are getting very good scores and those who don't then get you know a bit depressed that why we are not able to solve the question it's it's not a problem in your intellectual capacity it's all how much knowledge you know and many a times you don't know a lot of things So first you have to learn those things secondly you have to learn how to identify the keywords in the question and the third uh make it a fast habit of solving it because there is a deadline in the exam it's not like you can sit and solve the questions at your ease it's very fast so mocks are here to help you out and uh, i'm going to solve one more sub question today uh let's do it uh so offer all those new candidates who are watching this video just a quick summary uh these are the past australian dental questions and uh if you want to get enrolled in my group uh if you want things for free i have uploaded uh, all the books in the target adc facebook group you have to go give out your uh, answers on the questions that i have asked just for verification purpose and i'll accept your request like i accept once a week the facebook request and uh, if you wish to enroll you can directly message me through instagram facebook email me on uh, adcwrittenmocktest@gmail.com and there are any ways to whatsapp groups which i have made which is accessible to all already 1000 candidates over there uh uh it's a whatsapp chat group uh so the links of which i have given in various of my videos so and uh, if you wish to personally get enrolled with me uh, where i give out the mock test for you all to solve uh, with uh, doubt solving on one to one basis then just message me okay so uh, yeah let's let's start solving uh, this is the photograph of a clinical presentation of a 55 year old farmer farmer very important word why the occupation is important because being a farmer means you are out there in the sun quite a lot uh presenting with a firm lesion firm lesion over the left upper of his lip covered with a crust he states that it's been slowly growing over several years yet it's not painful all right so anything which is not painful and which is not normal is a sign of a great danger uh, that means something wrong is happening see our bodies are made in a way that when something abnormal is developing somewhere uh, your body gives out you a sign in a form of pain but if it's failing to do so that means whatever is growing is very stubborn strong and not good for your body pain is actually a good sign i always tell all my patients you know when they say doctor my child is in pain i'm like that's a good sign that means there is something wrong which is happening and it, the body is asking you to correct it rather than that thing growing big and becoming more problematic it's better to correct it isn't it better when the patient comes to you with a sign of pain for say example irreversible pulpitis or pain while biting and you see a cavity you fix it right there and there and the tooth remains good and stable 
instead of the two dying inside and there is no pain and the patient comes to you with a broken root piece and all you can do is extract it you know because the patient says there was no pain so i never bothered and the tooth kept on breaking down over a period of years and now it's so broken down that you cannot save it so wouldn't it would have been better if that tooth would have given the patient pain so that he would have had come to you and you would have fixed it so pain is good never shy away from pain you know it's, it's a body's way of telling you so whenever there is no pain and something is growing which is not meant to be there it's a problem right you you should be like very very alarmed at such lesions immediately you have to seek specialist opinions or if you know what that is you have to like alert the patient in the most polite way and immediately spot on start treatment for it right because in such scenarios which it looks like most is a cancer uh the earlier you spot on the earlier you diagnose the earlier you start treatment more chances of survival right because you are reducing the chances of metastasis and once any lesion metastasizes the the prognosis is very really very less right so anyways so when you read this question and when you see this picture the immediate keyword that should hit your mind is is a farmer that means he's been exposed to a lot of light and australian sun which i have explained uh, many times in my video and my own personal experience is so strong you cannot even look at it and uh, yeah australia is a region where the ozone layer is thin in certain parts so there is direct uv exposure of the light and uv rays you all know are cancer producing if you are exposed for a long long time so he's got a lesion on his lip which is again a classical uh, area for squamous cell carcinoma to develop and it's been slowly growing and it's not painful at all so according to the history and the clinical presentation this is a classic appearance classic means it is fulfilling all the criteria of a particular lesion that is what a classic means like we say you know it's a classic movie it has all the components to make it like a blockbuster movie similarly uh, any lesion which exhibits their golden signatures and signs in their appearance in the location in in whatever history the patient presents it's a classic appearance like there is no doubt about it that it has to be a squamous cell carcinoma so uh, the options given are basal squamous recurrent herpes labialis and erythema multiforme see recurrent labial herpes labialis and erythema multiforme won't be persisting continuously they would come go come go and specially cause pain here there is no pain so i can doubt basal and squamous but uh, i'm going to go with squamous more because it's increasing basal cell carcinoma is like a rat burrowing in a hollow it goes down deep it it seldom increases like this but squamous like increases you know plus it's on the outside of the lip so you can be confused about basal and squamous but this is a classic sign of squamous the main etiologic factor for lip cancer is okay now now what is the adjective here like i always see in all of my videos main if i remove the word main then the question would be the etiologic factor for lip cancer is but when i'm saying the main etiologic factor it means all the options in the options would be correct all 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 the options would be correct now you have to choose which is the main one so uh, prolonged exposure to uv radiation heavy smoking chemical irritation chronic alcoholism all are also etiologic factors prolonged one but but uv radiation is the major one because it's known that exposure to uv radiation will cause a lip cancer now squamous cell carcinoma of the mouth intra orally inside the mouth most commonly involves again most commonly involves meaning all the options would be correct it's not like you'll have one right three wrong all of them will be correct you have to choose the most commonly inside the mouth intra orally gingival lip tongue palate 
lip is outside it's extra oral so don't jump on lip it has to be tongue palate and gingiva also get affected with the lateral border of the tongue the floor of the tongue the ventral surface these two sides are the most common and the posterior part of the tongue so the lateral portion the floor and the posterior part are the most commonly involved in the tongue intraorally if the option was if the question was extra orally most commonly involves then it's the lips so don't see lip here and answer the question is specifically asking intraorally so again that intra orally and most are the keywords here now which of the following is the least likely again oh my god such tricky questions least likely means all the options are again correct least likely primary site for the development of oral squamous cell carcinoma in the elderly least likely means this side will be very rare to develop dorsum of the tongue floor of the mouth lateral border retromolar trigon i just said right the floor of the mouth the lateral border of the tongue are the most common posterior oropharynx and the retromolar trigon is again very common the dorsum of the tongue is not common i know you might say uh, when so many parts of the tongue are getting affected why not dorsum of the tongue should be the answer but that is the answer that's what is mentioned in the textbook so you go with that now which of the following sites for squamous cell carcinoma has the best prognosis <laughs> this question is very tricky again best prognosis means all the options are again correct i have to choose the best best prognosis lower lip Retromolar area, gingiva, buccal mucus, and heart. Lovely. That has the best prognosis. See, retromolar, gingiva, buccal mucus, and heart palate are very heavily circulated with blood and the lymph. So is the lower lip also, but the mucous membranes in the body are like. not having that much barrier to prevent spreading of anything it's it's mucosa you know it it doesn't have those dermis layers which the skin has and those dermis layers of the skins are kind of protection before you actually reach the blood supply see if you slightly cut your skin there'll be no blood it would be just a scratch on the skin or perhaps the very superficial capillaries would be there but if you perform the same cut in your mucosa or the gingiva immediately the blood that would come out would be more because there is more of blood supply now when there is more of blood supply it means it's more connected to the body so whatever develops in those areas is going to spread faster to the rest of the body compared to the skin you understand so obviously if something happens on the skin and you detect it early and you remove it from the dermal layers of the skin before even it reached the blood supply you will have a better chance of prognosis correct that is what this question means i hope you have understood this what i want you to do is i want you to now pause this video Go ahead, read more about squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, erythema multiforme, herpes labialis, all these four uh, lesions. Then I want you to read the treatment options for all these. I want you to read uh, radiotherapy, how much uh, radiation is used. It's between fifty to seventy, I think. But just go ahead. There is a good article you can search on Google. Uh, radiotherapy guidelines for oral cancers i want you all to read uh the interval between the start of radiotherapy and you performing any dental extraction osteoradionecrosis i'm telling you all these topics because questions have been asked on all these topics and since we are discussing this you might as well open that read it form your notes so that when you're revising you revise all these things again revision is the best thing that you can do to increase your memory i used to revise so much i mean just reading anything new for the first time may feel like oh wow i've understood this but after two weeks if you ask me many details about it i may not be remembering it but if i was revising it 
I would like really remember. Revising is not just revising a particular topic. It's also linking on to some other topic which further, you know, the neurons in your brain, uh, the connections of them, they increase vastly when you link it to something. Uh, I'll tell you a very simple example. For example, you met say an XYZ person and if, if you're not in touch with that person, probably you'll forget. But if that XYZ person happens to be a friend of your friend, you'll always connect him with your friend because you communicate more with your friend and uh, whenever his topic comes out, you'll be always remembering that XYZ person more. Similarly, uh, the difficult topics that we read about or the topics that we read about for the first time, uh, it's difficult for us to retain because we don't link it with anything else. So here, uh, for example, when I've done this topic, immediately I'm linking it to various other lateral topics to it, right? Uh, now, whenever I'm going to open my notes and uh, I'll be like, okay, let's study oral uh, squamous cell carcinoma or, or, or something paragraph about it. And I, I've written in my notes, you know, osteoidal necrosis, this much is the radiation used, this is the time interval. And I've revised this. Now, when I'll when someday else I'm opening another topic and that is exclusively based on osteoradio necrosis or radiotherapy, I'll immediately remember, oh, I've already read this before, uh, although in relation with some other topic, but then my memory would be still refreshed because I've revised it, you know, and adequately I revised it. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a good way of studying and it makes it interesting also. You don't have to just stick onto one thing. You can take 10 different topics which are originating from it. That's called as linking and it works wonderfully. So anyways, uh, if you like this video, great. Please leave a comment and uh, I'm always happy to help as much as I can from my crazy schedules which are going on. And in my next video, I'm just going to share something nice and where my last one month went. I would like to show you that and see you next time. Bye-bye.